All right, let's do a short recap. So in real life, you've got a machine that's running from 0 to 40 in industry. You know it's going to change that temperature at 2 Hz, or acceleration is definitely 2 Hz. Um, you know for 2 Hz sample, you need to sample at least double that. If 2 Hz is your maximum sample rate, you need to sample at least double that, which is 4 Hz. I've decided to go 200 Hz, which is much, much bigger than double. Because I want to see the frequency component. And normally you want to analyze the frequency component. You do much higher than you really want to. Just to see what other noises there are. So 200 hertz. That's the 5 milliseconds there. Because 1 over 200. Which is will give you the period. 1 over 200 will give you 5 milliseconds. And I'm doing a thousand samples. So instead of just one needle value. I'm getting a thousand samples which will take about five seconds to generate at that speed with a for loop so a thousand sample is locked in the array and now we've got a thousand samples that we can do a Fourier transform on the more values you have to do the Fourier transform with the better your Fourier transform with because this it gets more convinced of your no noise issues in this case I'm just going to delete the 71 now So, when we normally this part won't be here, you would, there where it says numeric, you would read from an analog pin. So, we've read from an analog pin, we waited five seconds, we saw that there is the 2 hertz component and the 50 hertz component. So, we know 2 hertz is what we want, 50 hertz must then be noise. So, to generate, because we didn't have the machine in the factory, we just kind of now made the simulation. So we made a 2 hertz signal, we made a 50 hertz signal, we add them together and then put it in a separate thread so that it just runs separately, so at its own speed. So in real life you would do this to analyze your signal and now after this you will do your filter design. Because you don't want to wait 5 seconds for your control circuit to work, you want to work in real time. as with the call linear time invariant. So as you get a value in, your filter gives a value out. So it's all happening at the same type of time, clock pulse type of thing. So the, Fourier, the filter we're going to use is an IRR filter. It uses this equation. There's many ways of calculating these coefficients, um, but we're going to show you, as I said, pulse zero placement. And we're going to, you still have to program this, which I also show. This is a Fourier transform that we got from our signal analysis part. And now we need to put the poles and zeros there. So we want a pole there. And remember you really do the poles and zeros actually on the, on the Z transform circle. But now just to kind of give you an indication. I want that one to go through and I want this one to stop. So something go through is a pole, something to stop is a zero. This one can convert to a pole zero graph. Let me just get my pole zero graph here on the side, which is a little bit neater than my handwriting. Just gonna paste yeah. So on my pole zero graph, it means I want to put poles roughly where two is. Alright, so we want to put the poles there roughly where we think the 0 0.7 circle is. So let me just kind of put a seven uh, a circle in here so that's the unity circle and we know somewhere there is going to be in the middle somewhere there's going to be a 707 circle so we want to put the poles there at the right spots and why do we have two poles remember this one actually goes to 200 hertz so from two if that is two hertz it means two from this side so one nine eight it's going to be a spike, so we want to put the pole there as well, and wherever the 50 is, we want to put a zero there as well. So we put the pole there where we think the 2 is, we put the pole, the opposite, the image pole there where we think the minus 2 angle is, we put the 50 hertz there, and the minus 50 hertz that side. Remember this is 0 and fs, so this is going to be 200. So 360 degrees or 2 pi is 200 and this is also 180 or in this case f max which is 100. So if, you're, if you change your sample frequency the circle stays the same but that if your sample frequency is 1000 
means it's going to go from 0 to 1000, where this will then be 500. But you're going to place your poles and zeros somewhere there as well. To get the precise placement, we're going to use the school maths. Remember we did that in the previous video where we got the samples for x and y using first making subject of the formula. Just get these. So we said to get the angle we use this school formula y over 2 pi is the same as x over fs. We made y subject of the formula. We put 2 in there. We get an angle in degrees. Then we're going to use this maths sine of cos and cos to get the angles. And then to get the adjacent and the opposite. To get the coordinates, we use this and we got the coordinates getting our pole and our zero placement. Just fix my poles and zeros here. Getting our poles and zero placement. So we know, yeah, that pole, that direction there is 0 0.707, and the up, remember this is the j and the minus j, so plus j, 0.4, it's a little bit up from the x axis and a little bit down from the x axis. Then 0 is 50 because 200 is there, 100 is there, 50 is going to be there. So 0 minus 0, so we get there 0 plus j, 0 minus j, so that's that coordinate system there. Then the equation for this, for a pole zero placement on the graph is this. This is all theory. So can you see that this one is going to almost look at that one and that's where the equation is going to come from, that equation. We're going to put the poles and zeros in here to get the right value for the coordinates. And then to plot it, you plot it e to the power again. So a pole zero plot. And again, you don't have to plot this in MathCat, you can plot it on a piece of paper. This is just a visual in, uh, it does nothing mathematical, it's just visually for you to see where the poles and zeros are. But it's e to the power, the pole zero plot works with e to the power. And as you know, e to the power is sine x cos x, which actually the same as the frequency, the FFT, calculates the magnitude of certain free frequencies according to yours. So we said that axis, instead of it being an x axis, it's now the outer uh, radius of that circuit. Now substituting these is now next. You're going to substitute these into this equation here. You're going to substitute these into this equation here. And then you're going to have to multiply out. But before we do that, the next step is the moment you substitute it in here, you are now able to get a Bode plot. So what is Bode plot is important? A Bode plot is important because it's going to tell you how your filter is going to look like. Because at the moment we can say, remember we placed the poles in the zero there. So we kind of guessed where it's going to be. We don't know if how this filter is going to look like precisely. So to get a Bode plot of this circuit, and what does a Bode plot mean? A Bode plot means if it's a low pass filter, it's going to look something like this. But is it really going to look like this? So to see if it's really going to look like this, you can do geometric analysis of this. And I'm going to show you geometric analysis in the next video. How to see how good is your pole zero placement? What filter is it going to give you? Before we actually get to the IR filter, make sure that the bird plot of the filter is the shape that you want.